On Thursday, 16th February 2017, the Congress Milan Polymer Days took place at Palazzo Greppi in Milan. It was a two-day international event, organized by the University of Milan and the Italian National Research Council, Institute of Macromolecular Science, which focused on the up-to-date advances of various aspects of polymer science and technology. Five plenary lecturers and more than 20 invited speakers came from the international polymer science community, presented their research results and discussed future targets. The Congress was chaired by Elisabetta Ranucci and Marco Artenzi. My research activities are mainly focused on how we can improve the properties of polymers and polymer composites. And recently we are very attracted by the possibilities offered by nanostructures, nanofillers like carbon nanotubes, graphene and metal oxides and particles, uh, we found that uh, we can really uh, add some functionalities to polymers and polymer composites uh, like electrical conductivity, electromagnetic properties uh, and uh, besides we can also increase the structural mechanical properties of composites. Uh, there are a lot, uh, we have uh, quite a lot of collaborations with companies uh, interested in uh, this kind of activities which are ranging in different fields uh, from automotive for several other industrial applications like in the textiles uh, or fabrics uh, fabrication. In this particular event uh, I was asked to talk about the biomedical uh, polymer that we uh, realize uh, via synthetic approach. So we realize uh, copolymers, which are plastics made of different monomers, which are able to uh, realize uh, nanoparticles. These nanoparticles can include uh, inside uh, um, a drug, which can be uh, taken inside the body by many means, uh, particularly through injection. And these nanoparticles uh, reach by, by their uh, particular structure and by their particular functionality reach site the cells that uh, you want to target uh, for the release of the drug without being absorbed in any other part of the, of the body. Once they reach the cell, they spontaneously open and release uh, the drug uh, which can then be taken exactly in the point where you want to uh, to be effective. Our work is uh, uh, trying to develop new structures, uh, controlled structures for better uh, efficiency in the um, operations of interest and in conservation, which are typically the consolidation of, uh, of uh, degraded uh, uh, materials, the protection uh, against uh, aging, uh, against uh, the natural causes of uh, aging uh, and uh, also the cleaning of artworks. Uh, all these uh, operations are made by restorers and they use uh, materials or products which are often not suitable, completely suitable and not well known and therefore this is uh, what we are trying to, to do in order to improve the uh, efficiency and the quality in the in the field. I'm here at this Congress at the MIPOL 2017 because of two reasons. The first one is uh, we want to gain some experience in what are the attendees of this Congress doing or what do they want to characterize in in terms of their materials and we want to get information how can we improve our devices in order to make some specific methods which could be of interest for these attendees of this congress uh, possible within our device. And the second reason is uh, it's the aim of our presentation. We want to give 
in this presentation a short overview about some specific tools, some specific methods which are possible currently with our rheometers and which might be of interest for all the attendees of this Congress in order to do an advanced rheological characterization of their materials. My presentation was uh, about the development of uh, novel polymeric materials for uh, tissue engineering application. Uh, this means uh, uh, polymeric materials biocompatible so that uh, uh, don't provoke any adverse reaction in the human body and biodegradable so that can be degraded by the human body and that possess a highly porous structure, three-dimensional porous structure that uh, uh, allow the adhesion, the proliferation and the penetration of cells into the scaffold. The strategy is to uh, regenerate completely a damaged tissue instead of replacing it with uh, a permanent prosthesis, which is the conventional uh, surg surgical approach. My job is to support uh, customers after sales in order to help them developing methods uh, and interpreting data coming from our instruments. TA Instruments produces equipment for laboratories in the field of thermal analysis, rheology, microcalorimetry and thermophysical analysis. Today I presented a work which did so much effort to promote the use of mass spectrometry in the characterization of the synthetic polymer. In particular, in this presentation, we use the matrix assisted laser resorption ionization. It means that is a relatively new technique that was developed in 1985, in which the polymer, the polymer sample, is mixed with a lot amount of uh, low molecular mass organic matrix in the ratio one to one to one ten thousand and then is left to crystallize and they will be subjected to a pulsed UV laser light that produce, when it's bombarded inside the source of a mass spectrometer, a plum of, or a plum of molecules, ions and neutral molecules that produce the protonation or in the ionization of a macromolecular chain. My research focuses on creating new materials from trees. And what we use from trees is the nanocellulose, which is the load-bearing component in trees. And in particular, we are trying to combine this nanocellulose with uh, clay, which you can find in the soil, to create materials who are strong and stiff and show also fire protection um, characteristics. So you can form films by filtration or foams by fish drying. And all of these materials have a great future in uh, bringing us to a, a more sustainable society. I have tested that it is very biocompatible to the human cells and it, is, uh, it can promote uh, the mineralization of a human body. So I applied it uh, in, in three uh, applications. Uh, this nanogram oxide was used in starch and PLA composite as a compatibilizer to improve uh, the uh, bonding between starch and PLA. And besides of that, Nanogram oxide was also introduced uh, in starch porous scaffold for bone regeneration. Uh, and the third route is uh, to introduce nanogram oxide in the pure starch nanofiber to further mimic the nanofibrous uh, extracellular meshes in the human body. Uh, so, in this way, there, this uh, bottom top down and closed loop strategy was demonstrated uh, in my work. So I produced the uh, graphene oxide from starch and then I reused them back into the new starch materials. And I hope this project can uh, contribute uh, some of my effort to the sustainable society. My field is biomedical application. So I produce nanoparticles as contrast agent or therapeutic agents. 
I really like this field of work because chemistry is, is just a small part of this, is not all of it, so knowing chemistry allows me to synthesize good products, but then we need to have a collaboration with biologists or, or material scientists in order to properly evaluate everything for their medical approach. I presented my work based on the synthesis of chromium catalyst for the polymerization of uh, different olefins, namely ethylene, uh, cyclic olefins and butadiene. And this work is a uh, part of my PhD project and it started some two years ago, so nice first uh, results and that are very promising and because we discovered this type of catalyst is able to do some very uh, different and particular um, structure, in particular from cyclic olefins, a uh, structure that has never, been, has never been reported before in the literature. And I was happy to be here in these days and to share some new information and new knowledge with uh, many other scientists. Mm -hmm.